Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rubia, I hope you're all good. So hopefully you saw a video I did recently on the Mua preamp live pedal, which I was absolutely blown away by. Um, it's just an awesome product, you should check out that video, I'll put it in the description box. Well today we're also going to be looking at another Mua pedal, and this one is, to be fair, a really, really awesome, useful tool that I'm sure many of you will find incredibly useful, including myself. We're looking at the Mua Radar. So what the radar is, if you can see on the close-up cam, it's this tiny little pedal. It's literally minuscule, and it's a uh, it's a cab simulator in a pedal. And essentially, how it works is you've got 30 different cab models that are both bass and guitar. There are 11 different microphones to choose from, uh, and there are four different power amp simulators to choose from. Uh, so like EL34, 6L6, 6V6, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you can also store up to 36 user presets. And that is, if that wasn't enough, then you can also load your own impulse responses on it, which for me is really awesome. And that's what makes this, for me, such a useful tool, because I can take this on tour, I can take this on the road, I can do remote recordings with the same IRs I use at home. Uh, it's just, I mean, to be fair, it's the size of something you can fit in your back pocket. So, I mean, I'm just already blown away by that. And I was already blown away before by trying out the Mirror Preamp Live. You can also hook this up to your computer, there's an, there's an interface that you can download from the Moors website that helps you control, load in and load out, all sorts of stuff like that. And finally, there's a whole EQ section, you can choose between parametric or graphic EQs, uh, and you can fine tune the EQ to the nth degree by pinpointing whatever frequency it is you want, the Q factor, and then the boost or cut. So the signal chain you're going to hear today is my guitar going straight into the Victory V4 Series Crack and Preamp pedal straight out of that into the radar and then out of the radar into my Universal Audio Apollo 8P, all captured in logic. So let's check it out. Okay, so my signal chain is gonna be PRS straight into the Kraken V4 series preamp and then out of that into the radar. And as you can see on the close-up cam, we're gonna start, I'm gonna go through a few different cabs and then we'll try out the EQ and then I'll load in my own impulse response so you can hear how that sounds. But basically how it works is, you can see on the display here, uh, these three tabs on the bottom say what's engaged on that uh, patch. So we actually do have power amp uh, emulation already on, we've got cab emulation on, and we've got EQ all on. So at the minute this is like a one, one by eight champer, I'm so it's like some sort of little blues champion or whatever. So if I press it, first thing that happens is it gives me a master level of the IR, and then so that's cool, because it depends on what the signal is, you can boost or, or reduce the volume there. Um, but then if I press and hold it, we're gonna go into the menu, and it's really easy to navigate with just the one knob, essentially it allows you to scroll through. Um, and then when you wanna access that parameter, you press it down and then change it. So, um, so power amp emulation, we've currently got set to on. So this is what it sounds like on. And if I turn it off, this is how it sounds. So, of course, I can also go ahead and uh, mess around with the tube saturation, um, the different presence and different output levels and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, move across to next. So this is my cab area. Uh, and as you can see here, you've got loads of different parameters, um, like the type of cabinet, the type of microphone you want to use, the volume of it, and then, of course, the distance. So like that's C edge means cone edge and then distance is how far away from the speaker you actually are. So let's just have a quick listen. So we'll start out now. So that sounds pretty good. That looks like a U87. Um, so what I'm gonna do is mess with the positions. Worth pointing out, if you're new to micing up a cab, the closer to the centre you are, the more brittle and harsh it's going to be. Um, so with, when, it, when you're adjusting this C edge, what it means is the higher the number, the further away from the centre it is, the less high end you're going to have, the less sort of high frequencies you're going to have. pretty good and then distance another thing uh, with, with distance depending on uh, how far away you are from the cone in the real world there's you're going to capture more air and more intense resonance and that kind of thing and the closer you are the more direct and maybe 
alternately punchy it might be. Um, so this is how it'll sound. <laughs> So I'm liking the way it's sounding around sort of 10. For me, that sounds pretty decent. But the only thing is that for me, it's still missing a little bit of something. So the beauty here is that we can go ahead and start EQing. Um, so if I go to next, now I can choose the different types of EQ um, by clicking it and then scrolling along as you can see. For me, my favorite is parametric because I can see exactly what I'm doing. I know the free I can pinpoint which frequency I want, boost or cut it and widen or narrow the Q factor. So that's my favorite, but each to their own. So let's go ahead and have a little EQ. So everything's set at 40 hertz, but of course you can click it down and it's pretty easy to scroll right through into the, the thousands. But for this, I'm gonna go for something like, I don't know, what we got. Might give a bit more low end, so let's say 180. Go along, boost that a bit. Actually, let's make that lower, let's make that like 130. A bit more rumbly. Uh, and I've boosted it. I'm just gonna do this re reasonably quick so that we can get through it. Um, but yeah, that's wide in the Q factor. A bit more speaker sort of resonance going on there. Uh, I'm not gonna use them all, but let's now look at maybe some high mids. So like 1K6, where are we? Yeah, 1K6, let's boost that. Sounds pretty good. And now finally, let's go for something like five and a half for a little bit more of that uh, sort of sparkle, as it were. Cool, and then once I've done all that, I can click save. And then I choose where I wanna save it. I'm gonna save it over, and there we go. Now it's saved with all those EQ settings set in stone. Sounds great. It's so small. Anyway, uh, let's try some different cabs. I think something as standard is they're all gonna have power amp emulation on, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I'm using a preamp pedal, so it's gonna color it a bit, but sometimes it's nicer just to hear it direct. It really depends on the sound you're trying to get. Sometimes the power amp emulation can be a bit too uh, strong, uh, so it really depends. Uh, but in any case, you could run this straight out of uh, an effects send into there, so you could hear it from an actual amp and then layer the cab over the top, it's up to you. Anyway, let's move on. Sounding pretty fat. It's telling me that I'm clipping on output, so I have to bring that down. That little arrow, did you see that? Let's try now. Cool, sounds great. So there are loads of different ones, as you can see on the close-up. We've got uh, an AC15-112. Oh, that sounds pretty nice. <laughs> sounds wicked. It's just, oh, there we go, twin reverbs, try that. Let's 
try it without power amp emulation on. Uh, so let's just turn that off. Yeah, it's really, really good. And do you know, the thing is that, of course, it is really easy to use and navigate with only one knob. That's the cool thing. It's just straightforward. And I should point out that one of the most satisfying things for me is the little color screen. I mean, you know, they didn't have to do that. It could have just been a normal LCD, LED screen or whatever. But the fact they went for a color screen, it's so nice and easy to see and easy to read. So, yeah, definitely kudos for that. Anyway, moving on. Let's try this one. That is a bass cab 410. Uh, probably shouldn't use that. <laughs> 412. This is a 1960s B, like I guess like a Marshall cab. Sounding wicked, but I'm going to get the baritone out and play something a lot more filthy. Oh, sounds really, really good. Scarily good. Scarily good sounding. Oh dear, that is fear. Sounds insane. The cool thing is that actually with the power ramp emulation, it gives you a bit more like intense low end because that's without it. It doesn't sound bad, but it's very direct. But when you put it in, suddenly it's got like just huge. It's not liking it in certain areas. Um, right, moving on. Cool, rectifier, okay, German V. I'm gonna guess this is maybe like a diesel or something. Sounds pretty good, but let's go ahead into the EQ section and see if we can influence the sound a little more. Uh, I'm gonna take out some 1K because it's a little bit, little bit harsh. Right, let's try that. So this is, and then if we pull a bit out, sounding pretty good. And then I'm gonna get some one, 100 Hertz for a little bit of like rumble, just cause. Then 
then finally, let's throw in a bit more of that sparkle around sort of five and a half K. Actually, we'll go, we'll just do six. Why not? Why not? Which is a little bit too high, but you get the picture. And I just want to reiterate one thing that, again, this is a tiny little pocket sized pedal that's carrying this kind of quality of speaker impulses on it. Because again, I'm running a, a preamp pedal into it. You can run any preamp pedal into it. And, you know, if I'm traveling and I want to record something quick and I need something half decent, I can throw this in, into the chain and I've got my impulses on it with EQ and all the rest of it. It's, Really, really good idea. Great technology in such a small footprint. I'm digging it. Anyway, so we're racing through. Anyway, moving on. Bass. Oh, God. Definitely don't want to be using any of these. are all bass cabs. So now we're through into... The back end. So this is 34. Again, another German V. Let's try just mess with this one. See what the power amp sounds like. Sounding pretty good, but again, these are all EQable. I'm getting the cool thing as well, just to jump back into some conversation, is when I'm landing on an impulse, I'm going, oh, you can just EQ elements of that that aren't as great as other elements from different cab. Let's say one's really brittle, I can just pull out some of the high end, or this one sounds really good but needs a little bit more low end. Just jump in and boost the EQ and good to go. Right. Um, so now we're on to around AC, what is this, AC3212? <laughs> It's got a 212 vibe about it. It's a little bit boxy, but tighter in the low end. So there you go. There's a load of different uh, impulses that are built into the radar. And I've got ahead and loaded on my own uh, impulse response on user number 36. And it's a it's an NTR uh, capturing a V30 um, speaker from a Mesa cab. So this is what it sounds like. Uh, and this is just straight in with no power amp saturation or anything. And I can obviously go ahead and EQ this depending on how it sounds. Because normally I like to blend impulse responses, especially on something like the Torpedo Studio where it can load two in. I, I like to blend them together. So I might use NTR ribbon with a 57 or something. But because you can only do one right here, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like. And we can maybe EQ it and get it to sound a bit nicer. So this is how it sounds. <laughs> So I'm liking the way that that sounds immediately. It's kind of, it needs more brightness. It's definitely a ribbon mic, but the best part is that I can jump in and go ahead and mess with the EQ. So what we got, parametric. So let's just brighten it up to start with. I'm gonna go ahead, jump right up to, I don't know. Yeah, around five, let's just do that. <laughs> Cool, and then might need a little bit more actually. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find my high mids. So like 1.52K area, let's do 1.75. Pretty good. And then I might want to pull out a little bit of flubbiness. So let's go around here, pull a little bit out. And then finally, I might want to add a little bit of that low end again. So let's just go 115 and then one last thing I want to do is just...
sounds so good. Right. Um, let me just go ahead and try mess around with the power amp at least. Let's see what that has to offer. So let's try EL34. 6L6 sounding tasty. Um, let's add a little bit more presence. What's cool is they're almost both usable, so this is without. Which sounds sick, and then with it on. So there's a quick look at the Moor radar. I have to admit, I'm completely blown away with Moor in terms of the quality of the products I've just reviewed. Like I took a look at the preamp live and now the radar and both of them, I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed. Not only are they affordable, they're small, they're portable, they're easy to use, they're really straightforward and the quality seems great. The sound quality is great. I don't really know what if there is anything to say bad about what I've just witnessed, which is two great quality products. Um, yeah, the Moor Radar, like being able to take this on the road for recording purposes in a last minute you know, situation in a live atmosphere where for some reason something's gone down and we need to be able to do a line recording of some sort or Ben needs an in-ear feed, I can take this and then he's got a feed and it's just like yeah, I don't know. That's how I'd use it on the road. I definitely see it coming with me on tour just in case kind of thing. Uh, and also if I'm traveling, I'll probably put it in my bag so that I can record stuff as well. But either this or the preamp live or both, um, to be honest, because it's just so portable and easy to use. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much to Mua for sending these products over. Hope you enjoyed the way they sound. Let me know in the comment section below. I'll put links in the description box. Uh, like, subscribe and share and I will see you all very soon.